Welcome back, Barbarians. Today, we're going to be answering the age-old question of where are you going to put all of your clothes? We're building an IKEA wardrobe. This is a full-size wardrobe slash closet from IKEA. This is the Brim... I don't know how to pronounce it. Who knows how to pronounce anything from IKEA? Brimness. And we're kicking it off with a nice little time lapse here. It's going to be a lot of time lapse in this one. For anyone who may be new, welcome. I'm the Techno Barbarian, and I'm building a tiny house in the back of a 17-foot U-Haul truck. Kind of a funny story behind the IKEA wardrobe choice here. I actually had one of these in my old studio apartment that I was going to simply transfer into the truck when it was completed and ready. However, I damaged it during my move to Texas. Therefore, I had to purchase a new one and assemble it from scratch all over again. Now, obviously, the first thing I'm going to do to my brand new wardrobe is butcher it with my multi-tool because I need to take approximately one inch off the height of this box in order to fit some storage bins that I want to place on top afterwards. So this thing isn't tall enough to reach the ceiling. It leaves me about five or six inches or so above it. And I want to make sure and utilize that space as well. Before I can put the wardrobe in place, however, I have to make sure that this wall is finished. I'm placing my classic eighth inch plywood here to allow for a flat surface for my wallpaper to stick to. I'm gonna go with a continuation of the wallpaper that I used in one of my previous videos. Surfacing all the walls in the living room area. This is the first time I've really ever used wallpaper at this scale. The installation is fairly straightforward. This wallpaper is pretty durable, so I wasn't, I wasn't uh, having to deal with any kind of rips or tears or anything like that. The only real issue was getting it lined up and making sure there weren't any bubbles or ripples in the wallpaper once it was complete. There were plenty of times where I had to kind of go back and reapply glue where it had dried out before I got the final placement in there. Uh, overall, the process just to get this one kind of six foot wall section done probably took me about two hours. Final product came out quite satisfactory. The scenes between the strips of wallpaper are barely noticeable at all. Finishing off the outlet installation here for my eventual wall mounted TV gives us a nice completed wall and we can move on to, well, actually we can't move on to getting the wardrobe installed yet because I have to finish the other wall on the electrical cabinet. So it's finally time to bite the bullet on this. I've been going back and forth on whether or not I wanna stain this or paint this or do wallpaper on this. We're gonna give it a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper just to prepare the surface after some of the beating that is taken during construction. Make sure the surface is nice and smooth, get all the dust off there. And my original plan was to actually try and stain this. I went with a uh, gun stock brown stain. I really just wanted some, something like a light amber, not too much darker than it already was. And I wanted to try to get the best stain, as po the best quality possible. So I'm doing a pre-stain application here to one of my doors, the inside of one of my doors as a test. As soon as I put this gun stock on, I can tell that it's going to be a lot darker than I anticipated. It actually doesn't even really look like the label. The label looks a lot lighter, and you can see that here in just a second. But aside from the fact that the color wasn't consistent with what was advertised, the stain just simply didn't apply evenly to the, this plywood.
There's a saying out there, something that includes a lipstick and some pigs or something like that, but basically you can't make this really cheap plywood look nice with some stain because it's gonna have some imperfections and some defects that you simply can't cover up with stain. So once I saw that, I decided, all right, it's time to go ahead and move on to some paint. I'm gonna use the same exact paint that I used on the bathroom door and my pass-through door, and that's the kitchen, bath, and trim enamel. This stuff has been worked out quite well on the doors that I've used it on so far. It hardens to a pretty solid protective surface, and it's semi-gloss, so it's gonna help reflect some of the light in the box from the skylight I've got there, as well as the kitchen light. And it's going to be easy to clean with that semi-gloss on there. One thing I would definitely not recommend is ever putting any kind of satin paint inside of a truck because it's going to get dirty in there very easily and satin is much harder to clean than semi-gloss. I may have even went with the full gloss if they had it available, but I, I couldn't find any. So we do one coat of primer for the kitchen bath trim primer and then two coats of the kitchen bath trim enamel here from bear One of the things I was hoping to accomplish with the paint is the erasure of the wood grain on the plywood. With one application of the primer and the paint, it was definitely not enough to hide that, that grain texture, but two coats, as long as you apply the second coat liberally, you will definitely start to get cover up of those grain patterns on the wood. And the idea here for me, at least at this point, after trying to justify my staining failure is that I wanted this to look like a drywall. So, you know, the same kind of wall that you would have in your house, just a white painted drywall. With the trim around the bathroom door finally painted, I can move on to getting that gap filled around that frame there. There's been a quarter inch gap roughly that I've been having to deal with and look at. I've been waiting for a long time to fill this one up and make that door look nice and clean. And of course, I didn't have enough caulk to get the job done on the first pass. Uh, all right, so I ran out of caulk halfway through doing this. I got this side done. So this kind of looks messy, but I'm going to go through here, caulk all this again, and hopefully make it look something like, like this. So this is the finished edge. This is me running out of caulk halfway through. So we got about a quarter of an inch gap that we're going to be closing with the caulk here. I'm using a high flexibility caulk here just in case uh, any kind of expansion or contraction happens in the future with these materials. Seeing as I'm trying to build this thing for four seasons, I do want it to be ready to handle large temperature fluctuations throughout the year. A few touch-ups of the caulk and then our final application of paint on the wall. You can see already that the light is reflecting from the bedroom area off that wall and I really like that effect of the semi-gloss paint. I think it's important again to utilize any kind of trick you can to get more light to bounce around in these small spaces to at least provide the illusion that you're in a bigger space than you actually are.
the paint done on the doors and everything else, everything gets reattached and I can finally move the wardrobe back in place. Now, I had to paint this wall because once this wardrobe is in place here, I'll, it'll, I'll be fastening it to the wall and it's not going to be moving. We're using these L brackets to permanently fasten it to the wall and if you've been to Ikea or purchased anything like this lately, you'll know that the Ikea representatives will be sure to tell you multiple times that this needs to be fastened to the wall. Now, we can take those warnings and multiply them by a thousand because we're going to be in a moving truck here. And there's no doubt that this would be dangerous if it tipped over. So we're going to make sure this is solidly in place. Of course, everything in the truck serves more than one purpose. And with the wardrobe, I'm going to be using it to have an exit vent from the utility cabinet for an exhaust duct. We're going to be sucking all that hot air out of the utility cabinet and generated by that inverter and blowing it out the bottom of the truck. So we're using some three inch ducting hose here with some adapters that I snagged off of Amazon, drilling a hole straight through into the utility cabinet and running that hose down to the bottom of the wardrobe. Picked up a low wattage fan. This sh should be able to run on a constant basis and evacuate that hot air from the utility cabinet. This runs off of 12 volt, similar to a computer fan, but it uh, moves a little bit more air than a standard computer fan. I'm actually probably gonna end up having to get a different type of fan for this because this one is quite loud, but it does move a surprisingly large amount of air. And you know what that means. I get to do my favorite thing ever, and that's drill holes through the truck. Through the bottom of the truck. I know the Ryobi equipment isn't exactly heavy duty. But we're definitely pushing the limits of it when we're trying to drill holes through these aluminum I-beams. So I finished the job with a grinder, getting right in underneath the truck there. I mean, we're handling a grinder with very low visibility, maneuverability, right next to my tires. So it's always a little bit of a risk there. You might be asking why I positioned the hole that far away from the utility cabinet. It's because I have my water tanks mounted underneath the truck, directly underneath that end of the utility cabinet. So I had to go far enough back to clear the water tanks and allow for a little bit of extra clearance so that when I want to remove those water tanks, I can wiggle them around a little bit. I fitted the PVC pipe in without the camera rolling and there was no way I was getting it back out. So I figured I'd just go ahead and keep on rolling. We got it hammered all the way through. We simply now had to trim it to size so that we could fit our duct adapters on top. The furniture from Ikea isn't exactly the most robust and the surface on this is just a paper thin kind of finish on there that I definitely scuffed up a little bit as I sawed off that PVC pipe, but it's okay. That's gonna be where I store my shoes in the future anyway, and that's gonna be getting covered with a more heavy duty plastic liner. With our adapter installed, you can simply clamp the hose onto the end and replace the bottom shelf, and we have hot air exhaust. To top it all off, pun intended, we're gonna be attaching some Velcro strips to the top of the wardrobe to utilize that extra space that I've got on the top. Like I said before at the beginning of the video, I've got about six inches or so above the wardrobe that I don't wanna waste, but I also don't wanna put anything permanent up there. I do like the option to have it open. It does allow for extra space. And again, a psychological feeling of more open space up there. However, if I feel like I need to have more storage I can simply put these Velcro storage bins on top. I can store shoes or food, supplies, whatever I need to in these for the longer term trips that I'll be taking. And that's it for this video, guys. Don't forget, you can join my private community over at technobarbarian.locals.com. You can ask me questions, get consulting over there if you'd like. I'll see you guys on the next one.